I've got two racks of baby backs today, and I'm gonna be making some brown sugar pepper ribs. First thing I gotta do is get my rub ready for these ribs. And if you haven't guessed, there's gonna be pepper in it and brown sugar, among a few other things. So let's get started. First thing I have is one cup of brown sugar. I have three tablespoons of ground black pepper, two tablespoons of smoked paprika, one tablespoon of granulated garlic, and a teaspoon of salt. Just gonna mix this together. And if there's a few chunks of brown sugar in there that are a little bit harder, don't worry about that. They'll either break down when it's time to get them on the ribs or they'll get tossed out. Kicked out of the party. All right, time to get this on our ribs. So here are my two racks of baby backs. The first thing I wanna do actually is I wanna break these in half. They're gonna be cooked in a rack out on the Weber kettle and it's easier to put them in there and maintain them and sauce them and everything like that if they're half slabs. So let's go ahead and cut these. I'm just gonna turn these over, pick about a halfway point, probably right about here. Take a kitchen scissors or a knife, whatever you wanna use. Turn them into half racks, right about there. There we go. Four half racks of ribs. Now we're just gonna get our brown sugar pepper rub on. Everybody gets a generous coating here. Rub it in. I've already removed the membrane from these ribs, trimmed them up a little bit. You notice I'm not using a binder. If you've watched enough of my videos, you'll know that most of the time, almost all the time, I don't use a binder. It's just a personal choice. I find that there's usually enough moisture to help hold the rub on. The back sides of these. Rub it around. If you've got any loose pieces of meat or fat, just rip those off, set them aside. Get these back over to the other side, turn them around, make sure we get every spot covered. I want a good heavy coating of this rub, especially on the meat side of the ribs here. There we go, time to get them out on the Weber kettle. All right, our kettle temp's at 211. It's been rising. It's gonna continue to go up, especially once we get the lid off, get some oxygen in there. I'm shooting for a temperature today somewhere around 250. If it's between, you know, 230 and 270, I'll be happy. And I'll just adjust the vents to keep it at that. Let's get the kettle open and take a look. So I have the kettle set up with one briquette basket and it's been lit only at one side so it's gonna work its way across, kinda like with a slow and sear. I didn't use the slow and sear today because I really don't need that seven hours of time that it would normally allow you with the baby back ribs. And I also wanted a little more real estate underneath the ribs. The slow and sear does poke out a little bit further but if I was doing a longer cook, I would definitely use the slow and sear. Now I'll be adding hickory wood to the top of these coals for our smoke. And I'm gonna be using my rib rack to hold these baby backs today. You can see that you can hold full slabs in this, but the ends tend to flop a little bit. So I always like to cut them in half. They fit perfectly in there and they're held just right. So let's get them on. I'm gonna start here, put our meteor pieces up front. You can see how this holds half slabs perfectly. Have the ambient temperature probe for the Thermapro over here on one side. We're not gonna have any meat temperature probe. We're just gonna do this by time and tenderness today. These are gonna ride for probably about two hours before we check them. Maybe we'll spritz them, but we will be saucing them as they start to get tender. So let's go ahead and get some wood on, make some smoke. It's a nice little stick of hickory there. I just broke that down from large sticks of hickory that I use for my offset. All right, our hickory is going. Let's get our lid on get smoking. As I mentioned, my target temperature for this is 250 degrees. I'm going to adjust the vents to get to that and maintain it. I'll add charcoal if I need to, but really we've probably got a four to five hour cook here today. So in a couple hours, we'll come out here and check these brown sugar pepper ribs, but right now I need to get inside, make the barbecue sauce we're going to use.
All right, now we're going to make our barbecue sauce. We're not making it from scratch. We're doctoring up just a base barbecue sauce. This is just a cup of bullseye barbecue sauce, just a plain barbecue sauce. I'm gonna get my heat on low right now. To this, I'm adding two tablespoons of apple cider vinegar. I'm also adding a tablespoon of the rub we used on the ribs. I'm gonna mix this up first. I'm also gonna add maybe a teaspoon, maybe a little more of Red Rooster Louisiana hot sauce. You can use your favorite hot sauce. There's like maybe a little more than a teaspoon. Mix that in. I'm gonna bring that up to a simmer. We just want this to come to a simmer. I'm gonna let that go for about five minutes. Stir it about every minute, just to make sure nothing burns in there. Let's take a little taste here off the spoon. Oh, that's good. It's got a nice pepper flavor, which is gonna match with those brown sugar pepper ribs. All right, I'm just gonna let this simmer a little bit, then I'm gonna take it off the heat in about four or five minutes, let it cool, then I'm gonna put it in the refrigerator until it's ready to go on our ribs in a couple hours. All right, it has been two hours. Kettle temp's at 235, holding good. I'll probably put a couple pieces of charcoal on there, but let's take a look at our ribs and see if we need to spritz them. Ah, those are looking nice. Now, you may be asking, how can I spritz those if they're in a rack? Well, if you spray them, the liquid just runs down them in between. There's enough of a gap there, so that's what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna hit it with a mix of apple juice and apple cider vinegar. It's five parts apple juice to one part apple cider vinegar. Got a really good color on them. All right, I'm gonna add a few more pieces of charcoal here. More than a few, I think it was five or six. But right now, let's get the lid on and let them keep smoking. See you in about an hour. All right, we are at three hours. Time to check these and most likely sauce them. Those are looking nice. So let's check our tenderness. It's a little more difficult when it's not a full rack because you can't pick it up and see how it's bending, but I can start to see some of the meat pulling away and I'm just gonna check for flex in these short pieces. Let's see, so let's take this front one here. Let's check, we're getting some good pullback from the meat, so that's good. So I think we are gonna start saucing these. All right, I just wanna do a little probing right now that I have them out. Let's see. See, there's still a little resistance there, so I know they have more time. I just wanna see how far they are. They're, they're getting tender, so it may only be another hour. Now, sometimes I would foil these, but I'm not gonna be foiling these today. I'm gonna to be coating these with sauce, and I may put them directly on the cooking grate and remove the rack and just sort of fit them in so they get really good airflow in there with the sauce. First step here is to give these a good bath of sauce. I mean a good bath. Okay, so I have decided that I'm gonna take the rib rack off and lay these flat to finish. It's just a choice. Now you can see there's plenty of room here. I could have done the racks laying flat, but I like to use that rib rack once in a while. And I like cooking in half racks when I know they're gonna be divided up anyway later because some of these are going to other members of the family. Go ahead and give a last little brushing here before we close it up. I'm gonna add a few more pieces of charcoal in here. We were down to about 226 when I took the lid off here this last time. I'm gonna add actually about eight pieces of charcoal, eight briquettes. And one more piece of hickory, because there's a lot of moisture on these ribs now to accept that smoke. I'm also gonna flip my little wing down. All right, our hickory is caught. Let's get our lid back on. Finish smoking these, I'm guessing another hour, hour and a half. All right, it's been about another hour and 15 minutes, so we're at about four hours and 15 or 20 minutes total on this cook. Let's give it a look. Gotta say, those are looking really nice, even in the artificial light. But let's see how tender they are. Let's see, let's probe here. Oh, that's feeling good. Nice, sliding in and out. Very good. I think I've said it before, I don't like my ribs falling off the bone. I like to be a little bit of bite, but I like them tender. These feel just perfect. If you like them falling off the bone, something like this, I would go probably another 45 minutes but you'd really wanna watch that you're not burning 
that sauce on here. So you might actually have to spritz them a little bit or you could have wrapped them. But this looks good to me, so I'm gonna get these off, get them inside so we can taste. All right, here is one half rack of the brown sugar pepper baby back ribs. I've already had a little taste of just the stuff on the outside and it's really good, but the real test is cutting in and having a bite of these. So let's cut into these. Now it's easier to turn it over and see the bones exactly, but when you do that, you don't get to see this top part and sometimes it rubs off. So I really like to try and cut it this way. So let's see if I can get this one right. So you got a bone right there. Let's see. Oh, just on the side of the bone. Let's see, where am I at? Oh, look at that. Nice. Nice and juicy. Move this one up here. Oh, beautiful. I'm gonna cut one more right over here. These look really good. It is time to taste. All right, here we go. Brown sugar pepper ribs, first taste. Let's see. Oh man, that is nice. I love that peppery flavor. This is one of those times, I don't care if I get anything around my face or in my mustache or beard when things taste like this. Mmm, that sauce we use to glaze really is that perfect little accompaniment. A little more sweetness, but still has that peppery flavor in there that matches well with the peppery flavor on the surface of the ribs from that rub. Oh man. Now, if you're not a big fan of that pepper flavor, and when I say pepper, I mean the ground black pepper, you don't have to put nearly as much. If you really like it, you could put more. Two tablespoons in this when mixed with that half cup of brown sugar, I think is just about right. Mm. And what can I say? Great smoke flavor from the hickory. Hickory is my favorite wood, and it's especially my favorite wood when doing pork products, especially ribs. Can you tell? Look at my fingers. Just like, gonna be finger looking good. So total cook time on these was about four hours and 15 or 20 minutes. Again, if you want these falling off the bone, go another half hour to 45 minutes, or you could foil them when you put the sauce on. I just decided that today, they were gonna ride naked the whole time, no foiling. And I really like the finish that develops on ribs when you do that, when you don't end up having to use foil. Nothing wrong with using foil and giving them that wrap time in a three, two, one method, but especially with baby backs that don't end up taking as long, this method works really well. So if you're doing ribs, don't be afraid to mix it up with the flavors a little bit. Brown sugar is always a good base. Adding things like pepper, paprika, and other things to it just allow you to mix other flavors in and have a little fun. Mm.